Welcome to another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice in fiber optic test equipment. I'm Professor Jim Powers. The main function of any test equipment is to take a measurement and to produce meaningful test results. It goes without saying that the test results are only meaningful when the technician viewing the test results fully understands what they are seeing. Fiber optics is no exception. The purpose of this video is to shed some light on the various topics involved in taking fiber optics measurements and then interpreting those results in a meaningful way for the purpose of determining whether the link is good or not. The whole reason fiber optic links are tested and measured is to determine if they are good or not. In other words, is the fiber loss measurement within specifications? Will the link work reliably once active equipment is attached? It is interesting to note that in the fiber optics industry, good or not is just another way of saying pass or fail. To determine whether a link passes or fails, we need two key pieces of information, an optical loss measurement and a link budget. The link passes if the loss measurement is within the link budget. Likewise, the link fails if the link budget is exceeded. Before we go into what each of these mean, however, let's quickly review what optical power is. Optical power is simply the amount of light intensity or brightness that falls onto a receiver. In fiber optics testing, the light is generated by a device called a fiber optic light source and is measured by a device called an optical power meter. These testers are set to a known official power level, a process called calibration, to ensure that the displayed measurement is as close to reality as possible. In the U.S., power meters and light sources are calibrated to equipment maintained by the U.S. government's National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. Optical power is measured in special decibel units called DBM, or decibels referenced to one milliwatt, indicating how much brighter or dimmer incoming light is as compared to the official milliwatt maintained by NIST. Optical loss is the measurement of the relative weakening of an optical signal as it travels across a fiber link. But we can't just hook the power meter and light source to the link and expect to get a loss measurement. Before we can measure loss, we first need to know how bright the incoming light source power is before connecting the devices to the link. This is a process called setting a reference, or zeroing, and requires one or more patch cables to connect the devices together depending upon the physical configuration of the link. Once the reference power is recorded in a power meter, then we can connect the link where a second power measurement called link power is taken. The link power is subtracted from the reference power to arrive at the optical loss measurement. Here's an example. Let's say the reference power at 850 nanometers is negative 20.50 dBm and the link power at 850 nanometers is minus 21.75 dBm. A simple subtraction tells us that the optical loss is 1.25 dB. It is interesting to note that the ends cancel each other during the subtraction because they refer to the same official milliwatt. Loss measurements will typically be displayed as positive numbers because loss is a measurement of how many dB units the light has lost. Contrast this with attenuation, which is the same measurement but on the other side of the coin. In other words, how much more negative the light is. So in the example, the attenuation is minus 1.25 dB because the link power is 1.25 dB less than the reference level. When determining pass-fail, we always use loss as opposed to attenuation because as we will see in the next section, link budgets are based on optical loss. A link budget is simply the amount of loss that a link can withstand before it is said to not work properly anymore. So if the loss exceeds the budget, the link fails. If the loss is within the budget, the link passes. The most common method of determining a link budget is to use an officially recognized cabling standard, such as the TIA-568. See our video about cabling standards for more information. The TIA standard, like other generic cabling standards, specifies how much loss is allowed for the particular individual components found in a fiber link. The fiber itself, the connection points, including patch panels, wall outlets, and consolidation points, and splice points, which can either be fusion or mechanical, including mechanical splice-on terminations. Fiber loss is calculated by multiplying the number of kilometers of fiber times the specified attenuation of the fiber, which can vary by wavelength and fiber type. 
connection loss is calculated by multiplying the number of connection points times the specified attenuation per mated pair, in other words, connection. Splice loss is calculated by multiplying the number of splices times the specified attenuation per splice. The overall link budget is the sum of the allowable fiber loss, connection loss, and splice loss, all given in decibels, or dB. When a loss reading is compared to a standards-based link budget, this is a process called certification. Thus, a link is said to be certified when the loss rating is within the link budget, in other words, pass or good. So, continuing our example, let's say we are testing a 100 meter multi-mode fiber at 850 nanometers. There are patch panels at both ends of the fiber, and we have used mechanical splice-on connectors. The TIA standard specifies 3.5 dB per kilometer at 850 nanometers, 0.75 dB per connection, and 0.3 dB per splice. So the fiber loss is 3.5 dB per kilometer times 0.1 kilometers, which results in 0.35 dB. Connection loss is 0.75 dB per connection times two connections, which equals 1.5 dB. And splice loss is 0.3 dB per splice times two splices, which equals 0.6 dB. So adding those all together, we arrive at a link budget of 0.35 dB plus 1.5 dB plus 0.6 dB, which totals 2.45 dB loss. Now, if we recall, our loss reading was 1.25 dB, which is well within the 2.45 dB link budget. So this fiber link passes with plenty of overhead of 1.2 dB. OWL has many options for optical power, optical loss, and certification. So whatever your need is, give us a call at 262-473-0643, and we would be happy to help you choose the right product for your application. This has been another instructional video from OWL, the wise choice of fiber optic test equipment. For more instructional videos, or to learn more about OWL's products in general, please visit owl-inc.com. I'm Professor Jim Powers. Thanks for watching.